Hey, everyone. Thank you for coming. I think it's time for us to get started. Uh, how many of you, is this your first time at Build? All right. And then for those that are returning, how many of you have been to an identity session before at Build? All right, so a few hands. All right, so uh, for the next 19 and a half minutes, uh, you're stuck with me. My name is Arturo Lucatero. I'm a program manager in the Azure Active Directory team. And we're going to be talking about how do we lock, or help lock down access to Azure using some of the identity features available in Azure and Azure Active Directory. Uh, just to kind of get started, uh, the identity features that are available in Azure and Azure Directory help you uh, reduce the risk and impact of accidents and attacks. And I say that mainly because of we've all seen in recent news or even past that there's been many instances where organizations have been compromised or information has been leaked because of either access not properly being set or maybe someone's account got fished and then they got access to something that they shouldn't have. And so today we want to help show some of the features that we have today that can help mitigate that. We're going to focus specifically on two aspects. One is how do we minimize the access that is granted for, for uh, managing Azure resources? And then the second piece, which is how do we help you minimize handling of credentials, whether it may be for uh, local accounts on virtual machines or our favorite service principles. And so we'll get to that. So I just wanted to put that slide up there. And then I'm going to follow up by just giving you a little bit more details of what's the scenarios that we're going to be talking about today. We have four scenarios. Uh, the first one is we're going to show you how to uh, establish a minimum criteria for securing access to Azure. And for that, we're going to uh, jump, on, jump into the portal uh, with Alice's account. Alice is a global admin, but also IT admin at Quintoso AAD, which is the company we're going to be working with today. And so we're going to do some, some uh, policy setting there, and I'll show you in a second. Once we're done with that, we're going to jump over and sign in with Bob. Bob is a sub subscription admin. Um, subscription owner, sorry, and he's also a development engineering manager at Contoso AAD. And what we're going to do there is we're going to show you how you can enforce just in time and just enough access when it comes to Azure resources. Once we're done with those two, we're going to jump over and, and switch kind of the tables a little bit, and we're going to focus on virtual machines. And so for today, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you with Charlene's account how you can simplify management of uh, local accounts on virtual machines, and uh, we'll close it up with a robot scenario on how you can simplify your story of, of managing credentials on there. That was quite a bit of information. Uh, that's pretty much all the slides I had. Actually, now the rest of the session is all demos. Right? So we'll get to that. So I'm going to switch over to my, my PC. And as you can see, I'm already signed into the portal. And so for our first scenario, it's about establishing a minimum uh, criteria on how you can sign in to manage resources. For this, uh, we're signed in with Alice. And so Alice is going to take advantage of a feature in Azure Active Directory called conditional access. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and define a policy. So if you go into the security settings, there's this option called uh, conditional access. And we're going to go define a policy so that whenever someone's trying to access Azure, they get prompted for multi-factor authentication. I'm going to go ahead and create a new policy. When I do that, I'm going to specify require MFA for Azure. And then these policies are split into two sections. The top is called assignments. The bottom is called access controls. For assignments, it's really the conditions that we're looking for. What do we want to happen, or what is it the, that we want to see, look out for? And then the bottom is what, how do we want to respond to that? And so there's, there's three portions on the assignment. There's who do you want this to apply to, what app are you trying to protect, and then what conditions uh, beyond that are we looking for. Uh, these conditional access policies can be used for many apps beyond Azure. For today's demo, we're going to focus on Azure. Um, and actually, we're not going to go and roll it out to everyone. So Alice wants to make sure that as this is rolling out, she'll start with a subset of users and see how this policy affects them rather than blasting it out to the entire organization. So once this loads, let me All right. Looks like it's thinking. Uh, let me give me one second. Is your network connection? It is? How's your network connection? It's good. I just double checked. I might need to sign in again. 
There we go. All right. I had changed my network earlier. We're, we're past that. All right. So we're going to go in and select the user. For this, I'm going to use my friend Bob. We're going to say, hey, whenever Bob is trying to access, now we're going to go in to find the, the app that we're trying to protect. In this case, I'm going to select Azure. the Azure management. And it's worth calling out that while right now we're going to go and test it using the portal, once these policies are defined, they actually uh, will, will be triggered regardless of which way you're trying to access Azure, whether you're doing it using some uh, tooling that is besides the portal. Whenever you're trying to access the Azure Resource Manager API, you'll get prompted for this. And we're going to go and define a condition. Um, here is where you could define things like, hey, I want you to be prompted for something if you're coming from either an untrusted location or maybe from anywhere but my corporate, lo corporate network, things like that, so that you know, it can be conditional. Um, right now, I'm just going to go and say, please, whenever it doesn't matter whatever the location Bob's coming from, ask him uh, to do something. And the what is he going to do is in the grant section access controls. And in here, you can see there's two options. I could block access. I could be mean and just say, no, Bob, you cannot come into Azure. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let Bob come in as long as we require multi-factor off. So I'm going to go and say, yes, please require multi-factor auth. And the last piece that I'll do before creating the policy is set it to on. I'm going to go ahead and click, click Create. And so just like that, we've created a policy uh, in conditional access to require Bob anytime he's trying to come into Access Azure to get it prompted for MFA. So let's try it out, see if it's going to work. So I'm going to sign out. And I'm going to sign in. with Bob. And if you can see right there, I got prompted for multi-factor auth. And on my device, I got a prompt that says, hey, are you sure you want to authenticate? I'll go ahead and approve that. And just like that, we're in. So took a couple minutes to create a policy. Now we've protected the access of someone coming into Azure um, using these conditional access policies. So that's our demo number one. For our second demo, uh, now Bob is in the portal, and he wants to be able to go and manage these resources. Uh, he wants to come in and, let's say, restart a VM. Now, what you'll notice is when I go into virtual machines right now, I actually don't see anything. It's blank. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Bob is a subscription owner, so he should be able to see a subscription. The reason why he can't see it right now is because we're taking advantage of privilege identity management, which is, allows you to enforce just in time, just enough access. And so what we can do there is Bob has decided that he doesn't want any permission standing, long standing. He wants to make sure that whenever he needs a permission, he'll go and elevate to it, even if it means just reader. And for this, we'll go to privilege identity management under my roles. And there's two ways that you can uh, elevate, whether it's for Azure AD directory roles. Um, and then there's also Azure resources roles, which is what we're going to do today. If Bob wanted to come in and read the resources and maybe just look at what's there, he could go and activate himself to be a reader. But today, we're going to go and restart a VM, so we're going to activate ourselves for owner. So when I go click Activate, you're going to see this, this wizard that basically talks about a few different things. One is, what's the scope that you want to activate yourself to? Is it to the entire subscription, or maybe is it to a particular resource group? So you could scope that down. The second piece is the start time. And the start time, there's two pieces. One is what day and what time. And note, we could go and activate for us right now, which is what we're going to do. But we could also schedule it ahead of time. So I can say, hey, maybe in two days, I need to come and do some tasks. Let me go and schedule my activation so that when I come in, it's good to go. That's particularly helpful if uh, you can define these to, be, to require approval. And there you can define a security group to approve uh, activation requests. So maybe Bob can't auto approve himself. He can go and submit a request for maybe tomorrow. Somebody will come in and say, do I approve Bob to activate himself, yes or no? And then he should be good to go. The other piece is there's a duration to this, right? Again, in the just-in-time fashion, nothing is permanent. Uh, you can go, and particularly today, I've defined it to two hours. I'm going to scope it down to an hour. I'm going to say, hey, I want this permission only to an hour. At the end of the hour, it will be revoked, and Bob will be back to nothing. And lastly, let's give it a justification. We're going to say build, and we're going to go and hit activate. What's going to happen right now is the role is going to be queued for activation. And then as soon as that blade closes, we'll be back to what we previously had. Now, if I go to active roles and I hit refresh, 
you'll see that Bob has now activated himself to be an owner. Note, I set this to be auto-approved for today for the demo, but like I mentioned earlier, you could have a, a logic where it requires someone else to approve it and so that you know, somebody else can, can have a say in it. So I'm going to go in and reload this. Let's close this one. So now if I come into my virtual machines, you can now see that I can actually take a look at what I have there. Right? So it only took a couple steps. We went ahead, activated ourselves for a role that uh, Bob was eligible. And now we can see the virtual machines. I can come in and go ahead and click restart. And that should be good to go. So that's the second demo. Again, showing you how you can elevate just in time and just enough access for what the actions that you could take or that you need to take, and then how they will be automatically revoked. All right. We're two for two. For my next demo, we're going to sign in with a different user, Charlene, who is our, our, our third DevOps. And Charlene has a particular request where she needs to come in and log into a, a, a virtual machine to do, to do some debugging. Uh, so let's log into the portal. There we go. Almost forgot my password. And so as you can see here, we've logged in. Last night, Charlene went and submitted a request to Privilege Identity Management to be activated for the roles needed so that this morning they would be ready to go and we didn't have to get approval. Uh, we're going to come into uh, my virtual machines. And you're going to see that I have uh, two virtual machines. In this case, we're going to try to uh, log into this. Now, how many of you have had to deal with logging into a VM with local accounts, username and password, SSH keys, that kind of stuff, right? Everyone, right? And it can get kind of troublesome if maybe you forget the password or maybe you leave keys behind and you don't know what they are. Maybe they'll, you know, bad things could happen. So we're going to try to show you. We're going to, uh, in fact, today, nobody else has seen this, I believe, a new way that which you can authenticate to a virtual machine and connect to it using a much more secure and, and streamlined way. So you ready to take a look? All right. So when we get to go and hit connect, in fact, I'm going to queue up the cloud shell because we're going to need that in a second. Um, but when I go and hit connect, you're going to see this other blade that comes up. And now if you, if you read towards the third item, it says log in using Azure Active Directory. So what this is going to allow us is to log into this virtual machine using Charlene's Azure Active Directory account. No longer need a, a local account on the VM. No longer need SSH keys. Let's go try it out. So I'm going to copy this. If I go into the Cloud Shell back, queued it in, and we go and paste, we hit go, we're going to get a prompt that says, hey, please go to Microsoft.com device login and enter this code. This is a very similar experience than if you've used the CLI when you're trying to connect to Azure. The reason for this is so that it allows us to make it a little bit more of a secure experience, where not only are you going to be able to use your Azure Active Directory account to log in, but we can also enforce any policies and perhaps multi-factor off, if applicable, uh, when you're trying to, to log in. I'm going to go ahead and copy the code. And then we'll go into a new tab. I actually already uh, saved the device logon, just for saving time. All right, switch back. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. Come back to me. We're still there. We got our code. I'm going to load here, try to connect. We're going to copy this. Go into the Cloud Shell, da, da, da. starting the terminal. We're going to paste it in. I'll go super fast. Now we got our code here. Nothing happened. We'll go sign into the portal. I'm going to enter the code in here, and I'm going to click, yes, please sign me in. I'm going to click Charlene's account. As you can see, there's a UI. If MFA was required, that would come up at this moment. Now we'll go, we've authenticated, we've signed in. Now all, we, all that's left to do is in the Cloud Shell, hit Enter. And we've signed in. So just like that, copy the code, go use a uh, signed in already account, and you're into the, your, your VM. Pretty cool, huh? With the exception of that demo glitch. All right, so Charlene's authenticated to the VM. She's able to get in, do some troubleshooting. That culminates our third demo, and we'll roll into our last one. So how many of you have had to deal with service principles? We've kind of mentioned that earlier and the pain of, of having to do the credential management of that uh, once it's on a resource. 
So today I'm going to talk about a new feature that is in preview. It's been in preview for a period of time called Managed Service Identity. How many of you have heard about it? All right, a few hands. So Managed Service Identity allows you to give Azure resources automatically managed identities um, and then use those identities to be able to authenticate to other things protected by Azure AD. And you can think about it, a VM, we can give this VM an identity and then use that identity to authenticate to maybe Azure Resource Manager or Key Vault or even a, a third party or your own service if it understands Azure AD. So Charlene wants to get away from the business of having to manage the service principles and use managed service identity instead. And so if you go into the configuration tab, you'll see an option to enable this VM to have managed service identity. What that does is it registers with Azure AD, it creates a service principle, and then we now take, uh, go ahead and manage that for you. You don't have to do anything of that. Uh, the other thing I want to show really quick is that if I go to my resources, I've actually already given this VM permissions to be able to go in and read a resource group. And if you, read, if you see under the reader column, there is cells F, FE02, that's the VM's identity. We've granted that VM permissions to read Azure Resource Manager. And so in interest of time, I want to show you what that looks like. So I'm, let me jump back into the, uh, the cloud shell. We're still in the VM, but now we're going to be thinking in the context of the robot. The robot is trying to do jobs and, and run and maybe uh, authenticate to, to Azure and do things like that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get a token so that it can authenticate. Uh, managed service identity makes itself available to the VM via local endpoint. That's how that identity is available. And then all you need to do now is basically make, this, make a curl call, um, or you can do a PowerShell if you're doing Windows. This is supported by all Azure IM, IS uh, VMs. And say, hey, I need a token, and I want that token to management.azure.com in this case. And hit go. And as quickly as that, basically a token came back that we can now use to go and authenticate to management.azure.com. So I'm going to do some low tech and just go ahead and copy the access token piece. Uh, I promise I don't do this. <laughs> Click copy. And I'm going to go and replace this access token section here uh, with what I just copied. Right? And so basically, the second curl call is all just calling uh, ARM, or Azure Resource Manager, to say, please give me details about this uh, sales prod resource group. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that and go back in here. We're going to paste that. Awesome. Oh, uh, give me one second. Da, 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 da. Oh. What's that? Oh, I have it wrong? Oh, I left everything in. Got it. Let's do that again. I'll get a token. And where do we end? Right here. Now we'll go and replace that. And just like that, Azure Resource Manager responded and gave us the details about the resource group and said, that provisioning succeeded. Again, just a sample call. You could do a lot of other more complicated calls or you know, if you needed to access Key Vault and perhaps retrieve keys to get the go, then go and talk to other services like storage or things like that. So uh, I know we're a little bit over, so let me just jump back to the slides. And so just in the kind of uh, quick 20 minutes, we've walked through four different demos. Uh, the first one being how we, you can use conditional access to cut down the, the, uh, the access to um, Azure resources, and you can enforce different policies. Uh, the second thing is how you can enforce just in time and just enough access using privileged identity management. And then we jumped over and we showed off the cool new Linux uh, SSH sign-in using your Azure Active Directory account. Note, this is coming for Windows later this year, so stay tuned for that. And then lastly, we showed you a little bit about managed service identity. This is available to uh, all Azure IS VMs, as well as app services and functions. And there's a lot more services that are coming. Uh, there's a lot more content that we could cover. So please head over to aka.ms slash Azure IAM, where you can read uh, more about all of our different features. And please, please do evaluate our session. Let me know how I did at my very first build session. So thank you for being here. <laughs>